All right, hey, good morning, RCC. I'm going to invite us to stand to our feet this morning. We're going to sing a new song. It's called Only Jesus. Sing it as it becomes familiar. And who takes our brokenness and makes us whole again? Who turns the darkness into light? Only Jesus. Who takes our emptiness and fills us up again? Who traded death to give me life? Only Jesus. There's no other truth, no other way. No other hope. white as snow only Jesus who with his final breath said it is finished who conquered death to save my soul only Jesus have a seat and we are so glad you're here hey if you're new with us we have a card in the seat back in front of you even if you've been coming for a little while fill that card out and we want to know you're here you can put your name on it there's crosses on either side of the room and there's also baskets on the tables there and we have a prayer ministry we believe that there is power in prayer here at rcc our 
pastors, our elders, our team, we come together, our leaders, and we pray for the needs of our church every single week. We have a prayer ministry, like I just said, that meets in real time during our services, and they pray for our church family and for our services. And we want to lift you up in prayer. That's the point. We want to lift you up in prayer because we believe God moves on behalf of when we pray. And so fill that card out. Let us be a blessing for you and pray for you in this ministry. And then also, or in this, in this season, then also, uh, we have an opportunity to give today. And there's several ways that you can see on the screen. If you're joining with us online, you can certainly give online as well. And your contribution, it moves towards the movement of what God is doing here in all the different ministries. We just had Thursday night service. We have a ministry called Food and Friends. People from the community, those who are in need, they come and they can have a meal and then be a part of service. It's an amazing ministry. And that's only made possible through God's provision, but also through your generosity and giving. And so your giving, it is making a difference. And there's several ways that you can get plugged in and doing that that you can see on the screen. And thank you so much for your giving in towards that. Hey, we're gonna continue in communion. I'm gonna invite Mr. Art and he's gonna come out and lead us in that time. And then we're gonna continue singing together. If you didn't receive the cup with the bread and the juice in it, just raise your hand and an usher will bring one to you momentarily. I wonder sometimes what it was like to be a disciple back in the day not necessarily sitting around the table with Jesus at that Lord's Supper, though I'm sure that was pretty interesting, but in the days and the weeks that followed the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, I got to believe there were a couple of those guys going, why me? Why me, Jesus? Why would you make such an awesome sacrifice for me? I mean, I'm nothing. I'm less than. Ask anybody. They'll tell you there's the lower tier of society, and then there's me. I just don't feel worthy of your love and amazing sacrifice on the cross. And today, I gotta believe there are probably people right here in this room thinking the same thing. Might be some people online thinking the same thing of why me? I'm not worthy of that kind of sacrifice. A dear friend, great evangelist, once illustrated so well the, the relevance of Jesus to whosoever will. And it went something like this. He said, to the artist, Jesus is the portrait of that which is beautiful. To the astronomer, Jesus is the bright and the morning star. To the archaeologist, he's the rock of all ages. And to the architect, he's the master designer. To the builder, he's sure foundation. And to the baker, he's the bread of life. To the carpenter, he's the plumb line of righteousness. To the doctor, he's the great physician. To the electrician, he's the light of the world. To the farmer, he's lord of the harvest. And to the florist, he's the lily of the valley and the Rose of Sharon. To the geologist, he's solid rock. To the homemaker, he's the one that builds the homes that when the rains fall and the winds blow and the floods rise, that home does not collapse because it's built on a sure foundation. To the insurance man, he's not a piece of the rock. He is the rock. To the jeweler, he's the pearl of great value. And to the kitchen chef, he's the recipe of that which is righteous. To the lawyer, he's righteous judge. To the mother, he's the compassionate son of God. And to the minister, he's the message of reconciliation, not of religion, but of relationship with the living God. To the newspaper man, he's good tidings, a great joy. To the optometrist, he won't improve sight, he'll give sight. To the poor, he's the unsearchable riches of God. And to the philosopher, he's the wisdom of God. To the queen, he's the king. To the restless, he gives rest. To the religious, he gives relationship. To the statesman, he's the prince of peace. To the traveler, he's the way and the truth and the life. To the undertaker, he's the uptaker. To you, dear saved friend, he's the Lamb of God who has saved you from your sin. And to you, dear unsaved friend, he's the Lamb of God just waiting to wash you clean of your sin. To the atheist, he's Lord anyway. You looking for somebody who's beautiful? He's the fairest of 10,000. You want somebody with clout? He's omnipotent. You want someone who will be there, he's omnipresent. You want somebody who will know you inside and out, he's omniscient. What I'm telling you, dear friends, is this. You need, want, must have Jesus. And you are worthy of that love because of him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are here with us. And I thank you that in the economy of salvation, there are no less than, there are only joint heirs because of you. And Lord, I pray that as we take this cup, we take the bread and the juice, we're reminded of the incredible sacrifice you made. Lord, let us live our lives as a recognition of that sacrifice. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.
and heal and forgive. And he bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is that a proof my Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow.
church. Give God the glory. Amen. Hey, will you welcome all those who are joining us online right now. Welcome all of our brothers and sisters who are online. We love you so much. Great to have you this morning with us. Please be seated. My name is Nathan, one of the pastors here, and we are just so grateful to have you. If you're a guest, we'd love to see you. Make sure you come by the Welcome Center. We have a gift for you right after this service. But right now, we want to tell you about one of our amazing ministries, and that is our men's ministry. Will you guys give it up for Jason as he talks to us about the men's ministry? Morning, RCC. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He says, be strong and courageous, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and do everything in love. And that was his charge to the men at the church of Corinth. And that's a charge that we try and live by here at RCC in the men's ministry uh, today. And so we offer several uh, opportunities per month for guys to get together uh, and to eat food. We always eat food, bacon, eggs, you know. We gotta have the burritos, whatever it is. We make sure you're well fed, but we also dive into God's word. We see what it has to say about how we're supposed to act as men. So we got several things coming up in the next couple of months we wanna talk to you about. First one is Catalyst. Uh, is a four-week Bible study. Starts on Saturday, February 4th at 7.30 a.m. We meet for the entire month of February on Saturdays at 7.30. Bacon, okay? Bacon and Jesus. Those are the two things we're gonna make sure happen on Saturdays in February. We'd love for you to show up. You don't have to sign up, just show up. Get up, show up. It's gonna be a great time. Next thing, March 24th. Registration is open on the website, riverchristian.church slash men. Okay, riverchristian.church slash men. You can go there now. I'm not offended if you do. We're going to have father kid camp out. It's going to be a great time for us to get together, uh, get away from mom with the kids, you know, make some not so great choices maybe with the food. You know, we have the snacks that mom says no to. We do the crazy things that mom says no to. But it's going to be fun, right? We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a great time for you to speak into the lives of your kids, have fun, uh, spend time around a campfire. We're going to have hot dogs, s'mores. The next morning, we'll have hot chocolate and full breakfast. You're sensing a theme. I can see that, right? breakfast, food. Uh, but it's going to be a great time. Register now. It's 20 bucks for the family. Whether you have one kid or five kids, uh, 20 bucks, you go ahead and register now. Uh, and then Zero Dark Early, we meet once a month. We just had our uh, ZDE yesterday morning. We had like 30 guys show up. It was a great time at 5.30. The next morning after the camp out, we're doing ZDE. And it's going to be a kid-friendly. We'll have some stuff to make it uh, 
work for the kids if they're awake at 5.30 in the morning. Um, so that's it. If you have questions, men at riverchristian.church is the email address. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, you want to sign up, go to the website. I'll be out here. When you go out the doors, take a left. If you have any questions, uh, sign up. Thanks. All right. Give it up for Jason. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, other ways, uh, other ministries we have, I don't know if you know this, but we have a ministry called our maintenance team. We have work days coming up, actually, this upcoming Saturday. And I don't know if you know who's on the maintenance team. Who's on the maintenance team is you. All of you are on the maintenance team. And so we would love for you to be there, help us, uh, be good stewards of what God has given us. It's a great way, actually, to get your kids involved, too. We love seeing parents and grandparents with their kids and grandkids out here helping us. So it'll be this Saturday from 8 to noon, and we would love to see you there. On top of that, we are looking at trying to make a difference to people uh, all the way across the world for the cause of Christ. We have Ukrainian refugees who churches are ministering to that we're partnered with through the Salmon Foundation. And so we have a golf tournament that we're hosting right here at Eagle Harbor uh, for Ukrainian refugees, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, February 4th at one o'clock. So we're encouraging you to come and help or help us recruit for this. You can simply register at riverchristian.church slash golf dash tournament riverchristian.church slash golf dash tournament really simple hey real quick how many of you if i could give you a tesla you would take it how many of you guys would take a tesla raise your hand if you take a tesla all right if you get a hole in one you get a tesla all right and so uh, we're excited uh, about all the prizes but ultimately raising money to help expand the kingdom in really hurting places like europe right now what's going on with ukraine so help us do that get the word out February 4th, golf tournament, first ever golf tournament that we're a part of to help uh, raise money for Ukrainian refugees. Here at RCC, we do what we do because of our mission. And our mission is simply this. We want to win people for Jesus, train believers up so we can unleash disciples, all right, into our community and into the ends of the world. Will you say these six words with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Win people, train believers, unleash compact. I'm sorry, unleash disciples. Sorry. Let's do it again. Win people, train believers, unleash disciples. And that's just who we are. And today I'm talking about what that looks like, why you have breath in your lungs today, what, 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 how God made you. You are a leash. You should be unleashed for a mission. And if you're a Christian today, I don't know if I could bring a more important message than the one I'm bringing today. Today, I want to talk about spiritual gifts. And when you talk about spiritual gifts, people have different, different interpretations, different like ways they look at it. One is sensationalism, sensationalism which says, those things are long gone. That was in the Bible, but they're not around anymore. God doesn't work that way. God doesn't empower people. God, God doesn't do any miracles anymore. And I just want to tell you that we don't believe that at RCC. We believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And so that's not a verse. It's not a verse in the Bible that says that God has stopped working miraculously. In fact, Jesus said before he went to the Father that we, the church, would do greater things than he, which is just mind-blowing. So Jesus wants to empower his church, which is you, because uh, the same people who needed that power from God are also the same people today. We need the same thing that the early church needed, and it's happening today before our very midst. In 1 Corinthians, where Paul is trying to help people understand this, what it looks like to operate in the Spirit, here's what he said to them. Now about the, look at this, the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. So today, I don't want you to be uninformed. I'm going to do my best to talk about something that I am deeply passionate about, and that is spiritual gifts. And I've only got like 30 minutes to do it. And some of you are going to go, hey, great sermon, whatever. You'd be more impressed what I didn't say. That's actually the good stuff. But I'm going to give you what I can in, in, in a 30-minute segment. And here's the thing I just want to say. God is good, right, church? God is good. And he always, want to give, he always wants to give you gifts. And there's three gifts. There's three gifts I want to talk to you today about. The first gift is this, and that is eternal life. That's the first gift. Jesus shows up, and he sees our condition. And, and, and Paul says, for the wages of sin, the wage of sin is what, church? Is death. And so if you committed one sin, the penalty for that one sin is death. But Jesus shows up perfectly sinless, and he says this, which still blows my mind. He says this to you and me. I'll pay for that sin. I'll pay for that sin by dying on the cross for you. 
That is a gift from God through me. Look what it says in Scripture. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's the gift in Christ Jesus our Lord. Another verse says this. It is by what? It is by grace. So you receive something that you don't deserve. You have been, you've received grace. You have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the, read the last three words with me. It is the what? The gift of God. It is a gift. And if you've never received that gift of being saved, you need to do that. You need to say, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that he is the son of the living God, that he died and was buried and rose again on the third day. And I choose to follow him the rest of my life and repent and be baptized. You need to receive the gift of eternal life. That's for eternity. But I want to talk to you about two more gifts that impact what you're doing right here, right now on planet Earth. These next two gifts help you live a fulfilled life. The first one we'll talk about of the second gifts, of the three gifts, is the Holy Spirit. Jesus talks to his believers who've already been baptized, who've already been received, actually already received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it says this, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the what? Wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard from me speak about. For John baptized with water, but a few days you'll be baptized with the what? With the Holy Spirit. And so he's saying you can have this spirit-empowered life right here, right now. That's the second gift. That's the second gift. But the third gift, the third gift is what I want to really hit on today, and that is the gift of spiritual gifts. That is, you can have, receive spiritual gifts from God. Fuller Theological Seminary, I passed it in California. I've worked with them and taken some classes from them. It says this, that... 80% of people who claim to be Jesus followers don't know their spiritual gift and don't operate within it. 80%, which is mind-blowing. I'm like, I'm like, what are people doing? It's just mind-blowing to me. And I want to use a scripture from Romans 12 that I love so much to kind of teach out of this. When Paul says these words, we have different what, church? We have different gifts according to the what? Grace given each of us. So that word for gifts is charisma, and that word for grace is charis. And so the idea is that those two are very closely connected. Why are they translated differently? Well, basically, a grace, what's going on there, a great grace gift is that. Charisma is a grace gift. God has given you a gift out of grace. You don't deserve it. You can't earn it, but he has given it to you, not for your own personal enjoyment, but for, your, for you to help him expand the kingdom of God and lift up your brothers and sisters of Christ. You, you, you almost feel like when you operate within your giftedness, you feel like, like, I was, like I was made for this. Like something's going on beyond me when you operate within your giftedness because you know it's not you. I feel like one of my gifts uh, maybe you don't agree, but one of my gifts is speaking, all right? I hope I'm slightly, I can do that okay. Now, I went to my wife. I go to my wife and said, hey, I want you to go talk to uh, RCC in a room full of people and people online. Can you say something tomorrow in front of the church? Her response to me would be looking at me and turn around and walking out of the room. She wouldn't even respond to the question. That's not what she likes to do. That's not what she feels called to do. Um, She'll do it, but that she struggles with that. Her gift is more like compassion. Like she will, she will sit with people and be patient with people, long haul, just walking with them through their hurt. Like she feels what they feel. People come to me with problems. I don't really sit. I just give them, hey, this is really easy. Here's what you do. One, two, three, all right? Next, next person, come on. Let's keep them going. Like my wife will sit there. She's very patient. She will just love people over the long haul, very tolerant. And then, and then you know, I think about people who work with children, like my wife's like that, you know, they, 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 just, they can put up with all the noise, me, if I'm working with kids, like RCC Kids Ministry, I need a taser and I need duct tape, I need those two, and, and Jesus, I need those three things, no lie, I watched kids one time, I think the last time I watched kids, it's been, it's been a while, all right, I watched some kids one time, and my life groups, the last time that they let me do that, because what happened was a child broke their arm. I might have had something to do with that when I pushed them in this huge swing. I might, might have, all right? So, so thank goodness for forgiveness. But anyway, I'm not really good with kids, but some people can do that well. People can be with the hurting and sit with people, and someone can walk in the same room and see someone crying, but they look up and they see a light bulb out. They're like, we need to fix that. Like, that's their, that's their giftedness talking. Now, that doesn't mean they can't operate out of it, but they're, they're drawn to certain, certain things. It could be on the maintenance team, right? 
And it's like, why all these different gifts? Well, here's what I want you to know. We all have a gift. And I just want you to listen. Just please listen to me. I hope if you hear anything, you hear this. And that is this. You have one too. You have one too. In fact, turn to the person next to you and say, you have one too. Go ahead and turn to the person next to you and say, you have one too. You guys online, you have one too. And when you find that thing, man, it helps you understand like how you see life. It actually helps you understand who you are. Here's my definition of spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that, I want you to hear this word, read it with me, so that what? Together, not on my own, but together we can advance his purposes in this world. Now I want you to hear this. This is God's hope for our church and every church. The hope of God was never to create a place where, you know, the Holy Spirit comes in only once a week when you have that special moment during that, love, that song you love. Like, that, that's not what we're talking about here. We are the church, and by the Holy Spirit, we are created, we are made to make a difference in this world. Amen? That's why we exist. So you need to find your place. So listen to me. All hell is banking on this not happening with you. In fact, what what hell's doing is like, okay, I may lose Joe, I may lose Sue to Jesus. But if I can keep Joe and Sue distracted, Satan's thinking, if I can keep them hurting so much and so busy and in so much confusion and in so much pain and keep enough problems come in their life so that they never connect with the rest of the church family and they never help God advance his purposes on this planet. And many of us are in that boat. And it's time for you to get out of it. It's time for you to get out and get engaged. Let, let, me, let me tell you how this kind of happened in story form. In the Old Testament, Jesus, or well, God, had these special people called priests. Special people, special functions. And they would go into the temple, and they'd come out of the temple, and they would tell the people what God said. And so everybody just kind of thought, okay, they're the special guys. Not me, but they're the special people. And so people operated that way, but God saw fault with that. And so God changed it from the Old Covenant, from the Old Testament, to the New Covenant. And here comes Jesus. And Jesus says, he starts immediately taking common people. Common people, tax collectors and sinners and fishermen, people with problems, people with failures before Jesus. And he says this, I'm going to anoint you. You're going to be my church. You're going to help me change the world. And this, was, this wasn't just for 12 disciples. Like, this was for the whole church. Jesus dies, pays for our sins, comes back. And before he ascends, he tells, he tells them what's going to happen. Then 50 days later, after all of that, the day of Pentecost, which means 50 days, in Acts chapter 2 happens. The Holy Spirit is poured out on the people, not just the 12 disciples, but I'm talking about everyone who believed and everyone who repented and everyone who was baptized. And Peter, who thought he was special... Who thought, you know what, I'm one, of the, I'm one of the only ones that really has a spirit working. Realized he was not the only one. Because the spirit went on all those people. And he starts quoting from Joel, a prophet from the Old Testament. And here's what Peter quotes. In the last day, which is fulfilled on the Pentecost, God says, I will pour out my spirit on, say these two last words with me, I will pour out my spirit on who? All people. All people. There's no, like, pastors over here and you know, the non-called over here. There's no priest over here and pagans over there. (laughs) It's all of us together. It's not just a male thing. Look what he says. Your sons and who? Daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. This wasn't just for the seasoned Christians. This was for the new new people who were born in Christ. Look what it says. Even, even all my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will what? They will prophesy. And the church was born, and everyone got involved, and the church was just growing like wildfire. But then all some momentum kind of weaned out because then we went back to, you know, pastors and preachers. You know, they do all the heavy lifting, and then, you know, they're the called and the non-called. You know, we just show up to church once a week, you know. And then, and then the, the preachers, you know, they're called clergy. By the way, clergy is not in the Bible. That term is not in the Bible. Clergy means the one who reads. So I read to you, and you come to me to hear what's being read, and then I do that once a week, and then you go home, and then you are called, this, by the way, not a biblical term, laity or laymen, laywomen. You know what they do? 
They just lay around, do nothing. That's what they do. All right? By the way, that's not biblical. That's not in the Bible. And that went on for quite some time until the 1500s when all of a sudden a man named Martin Luther decided to shake things up because he read his Bible and he realized the way the church was functioning was not how the Bible said we should function. And he read, like in 1 Peter, he talked about this whole idea of the priesthood of all believers. All believers are priests. And that started the Reformation. But guess how that changed the churches in some ways? Goose egg, nothing. And then 2,000 years after Jesus, what do we have? We have, you know, the, the preachers over there and the rest of the people over there and, and the non-called and the called. And, 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 and that's not in the Bible, church. I went with a friend of mine. He asked me to go out to eat with him. He's kind of a redneck, and he wanted to eat some good old country eating is what he called it. I said, well, I'm from Alabama, and country eating is like an Olympic sport. I'm all in. Let's go. So we show up, we show up, and, and all of a sudden I order something, and, 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 and I, I didn't see it for a while because it was buried underneath eight pounds of gravy, all right? It was somewhere in there, and I finally found it and had a great time. We're talking. He saw someone he knew, and he wanted to introduce me to them. So we get up off the table, and he says, he's talking to him, and he says, hey, this is Nathan. He's my, he called me, he says, he's my preacher. I said, preacher? What's a preacher? He says, I said, hey, my name's Nate. Apparently, I'm a preacher, all right? And so, and so we started talking, and we sat down, and I looked at him and said, you know what? Um, you're a preacher, too. And he looked at him, big eyeballs. He's like, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I said, no, you are a preacher. The Bible says my job is to equip all the saints to, for the work of the kingdom. You're a preacher. I'm not the only preacher. And I could tell he was struggling with this, right? What I love about RCC is that we have preached, we have lived out, we have pushed hard that everyone, we want everyone to understand that we are an entire army of preachers here. Amen? Entire army of preachers. I'm not the only one. And I just want to say something to you people out there that are valedictorians and straight A's, you made straight A's in college and high school and wherever else and, 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 and you, you know, uh, uh, star athletes, you just did well. I just want you to know something. God can use you. He can. But he specializes in using idiots like me, all right? I just want to find out who's like me. Who out there had to work really hard for your C's? Raise your hand if you had to work really hard for your C's like I did. All right, good. I'm not the only one. We need a support group, all right? My kids make me sick. They come home with straight A's. I'm like, that is disgusting. They make it look so easy. I'm like, you're so much like your mom, all right? They get upset. They get shocked when they get B's. I was shocked when I got a B for a whole different reason. It was in PE, but... God specializes in using idiots, let me tell you. And I'm telling you, I'm so grateful for that. And, he, and here's, here's what I want you to hear me. I will not rest until every person who calls themselves a follower of Jesus is doing the thing that God has called them to do because we all are called in our special way to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? And so I want to encourage you right now, get your phone out. Everybody get your phone out, all right? Get your phone. And I want you to shoot right this QR code on the screen. Go ahead and do it right now. Go ahead with your phone. <laughs> and go ahead and shoot that right now. And that's going to take you to riverchristian.church slash serve. And when you get to that site, I want you to scroll all the way down. And I want you to look at all those options of serving, all those ways. And I want you to test drive a couple of them. Just go ahead and just reach out to, to, to that site, and they will follow up with you. Somebody from our church will follow up with you. And if they don't, if you don't hear anything in a couple weeks, if you don't hear anything beyond next Sunday, you reach out to me. You can find my email, on, and I'll, I'll make sure to, we'll make sure to make it happen. But go ahead, and, go ahead and do it. You guys online, you guys can do the same thing, riverchristian.church slash serve. All right, and let's go ahead and test drive some things. Let's find out where your fit is to help, help God expand his kingdom. I'm not really called to preach every Sunday. My calling from the Bible is, is in, in, in RCC's leadership, the rest of our staff and our, and our elders and our board, our calling is to equip all of us to do what God has called us to do in this world. So let me give you a couple of truths here. Number one is this. God has called all of us to minister to the world around us. Amen? God has called all, all of us to do this. Ephesians chapter 4 says that the pastor's job is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. 
I'm not one of the few ministers here. We're all ministers here. I'm doing my part, but my part is not enough. God is counting on all of us, and he wants all of us, all, to minister. I mean, it's awesome being a part of a church that, 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 that things are happening because sometimes when you operate in your giftedness, man, when you lay your head down at night, you go, only God, only God could have pulled that off. I, I received a letter from one of our dear sisters here, and I want to read it to you right now. She wrote me, just got this last week, and said, we know, she says, Pastor, a little about each other, but I wanted you to know that I'm committed to prayer for RCC, to the staff, the leadership, and body of Christ. As my golden years have dropped on my doorstep, I find I am limited physically in my service to our Lord. But, but I do know God has called me to prayer, and I'm glad to do that. I'm part of the prayer team here at RCC, but please know I pray daily for all those at RCC, prayers for wisdom and the Holy Spirit to work in the body of Christ, to open spiritual hearts and ears and eyes to the gospel and, and the work committed at RCC. I'm committed and excited about the growth, both in numbers and in work in our community. Then she wrote this in 2021. I made a commitment on January 1st to be a consistent tither Start tithing, and it is true. God has blessed me, and I never missed a dime. God is faithful. That's pretty awesome. She goes on, and she says, I'm hoping this note encourages you and that your peeps, that means you, you're my peeps apparently, your peeps are listening to you as you strive to preach God's word and are successful and effective reaching our hearts and lives to grow in Christ and faithfully reading God's word more than just on a Sunday. Love RCC and the work we are doing in so many areas, especially with our children and youth, food and friends and community outreach and so many good people here. I just wanted you to know my heart and what a blessing Blessing, blessing you and RCC is in my life. Sincerely, surely. Can we give God the praise for that right there? That's awesome. The same thing can happen to you. The same thing can happen that happened to Jesus can happen to you. Look what happened to Jesus. Scripture says this. It says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the what? With the Holy Spirit. Not just so he could have some warm fuzzies during a song, during worship time. Like it's beyond that. He gave him the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around, he did all that, why? He went around doing what? Doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Ephesians chapter two says this, for we are God's handiwork. What that means is you're a masterpiece. Every person hearing my voice in the room online is a masterpiece designed by God. Why? You're created in Christ Jesus to do, read it with me, good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Just so I can have fun once a, once a week at church? No. God has something huge that he designed you for. Scholars believe this, that God has a purpose in mind, all right? He has something he wanted to be done and then he created you. It wasn't like he created you and said, what am I going to do with this? No, he had a purpose in mind. And then he created you. That blows, that blows my mind. That makes me want to run through a wall, all right? I mean, I'm just so pumped about that. Scripture says this, that, that a spiritual gift is given to each of us, so why? We can, we can do what? Read it with me. We can help each other. And that's why here at RCC we're saying get in the game. Not for RCC's sake, but for the kingdom of God's sake. That's why we say, you know, we worship one hour, we serve one hour, and we're in community with each other one hour each week. It's really simple here at RCC. We want you to worship like you're doing right now. We want you to serve one hour each week here at RCC in some capacity. And we want you in life groups. We want you in community with other believers one hour each week. And that's why we have multiple services. Some people come on Thursday night so they can serve on Sunday morning. Some people worship right now so they can serve on Thursday night. Some people are worshiping right now so they can serve in 11.30 or the 8.30 service. I mean, I, I love that, but that's our goal for you to get in the game. Here's the second thing you need to know because so many of us get this wrong. Number two, every gift God has given is what? It's unique and it's important. No gift is more important than another gift. All gifts are needed. All gifts are equal. Here's, here's what God says. I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses on gifts. 
in 1 Peter 4, 10. It says, God has given, look at this, given gifts to who? Each of you from his great variety. Why? Because there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do of spiritual gift. Manage them well. Be a good steward. Craft your ability. All right, would be another way I would put it. God's giving you ability. Are you crafting it? By the way, it's not your gift. It's his. Are you be a good steward of it? So manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Lots of different gifts, but every gift is needed. 1 Corinthians 10 or 12 talks about, read the whole chapter, talks about every one of us is a part of the body. Some of you are, are the hand, some of you are an eyeball, some of you are a left ear. I mean, all of us are parts of the body. And he says that every part is important. No part can say, you know, the eye can't say the hand. I don't need you. I mean, if you woke up yesterday and your left foot was missing, would you notice? I think you would, right? Every part of your body, every part of the body of Christ is pivotal. So when you are not here, when you're not plugged in, it impacts all of us because you are part of the body. And I love what, what Paul does in Romans chapter 12 because he has seven gifts, seven gifts in Romans 12. And they're, and they're talking about every gift is given to edify the body. Like, I could use the gift that God has given me for my own personal agenda and fame and success, and you could too, but that's not why you have that gift. You have that gift for edification, encouragement of the body. That's why you have the gift you have. And so he says there's seven gifts, and let's just say you're at a banquet. Use your imagination with me for a moment. You're at a banquet, there's seven people, and each person at that table has one of the seven gifts, but a different gift. And they see the same thing happens at the banquet. While you're looking and, and watching, there's this person that just is walking with their dessert, and they fall and they stumble, and all of a sudden, the food goes all over their outfit, it goes all over the floor. How do each one of these gifts operate in that setting? They're going to see something different. Each gift's going to see something different. They're going to operate. And they're going to bring something needed to the table. Here's how the gift of mercy, the gift of compassion responds. This is my wife's gift. This is from Romans 12. That gift, if they saw that person fall, they would say, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? They start, you know, feeling with that person, identifying, empathizing with that person. Are you okay? That, that would be my wife. You know, she's so concerned about how they're doing, their emotional well-being. The prophecy gift, the prophesying gift, another translation is perceiver. They perceive what's in the will of God and what's out of the will of God. There's no gray with a prophet, all right? And some of you have this gift, well, they kind of speak. They're pretty sharp with their tongue. They say, well, that's what happens when you're not careful. All right? And the person that has a serving gift, servers tend not to talk very much. They're doers. All right? And servers, what he'll say is, or she'll say, I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. They just start going. They just start going. The teaching gift, which is my daughter, by the way, the teaching gift says, well, the reason it fell is because your plate was too heavy on one side. Thank you very much. I appreciate knowing that. It really helps me out a lot now. Um, Encourager, and encouragers, this is my second, like, prominent gift. Second gift, I, I compare encouragers to, like, Tigger and Winnie the Pooh, all right? They always see the positive and everything. They go, that's okay. It could happen to anybody, you know? Only 50% of the room saw it, all right? So don't worry about it. Not all 100% saw it. That's okay. And then giver, this is my son, Rylan. Rylan has got just a blessing all over him about how to be generous, and God keeps blessing him financially, and he's going to continue to do that if, if he's a generous person, and, and here's, here's what a giver does. This is my son, Rylan. He just says, hey, hey, here, take my dessert. Take my dessert. And then administrator, this is, where, this is where my gift comes in. I would say this, Jim, you get the mop. John, you clean up. Mary, why don't you fix another dessert for somebody else? I mean, for this person. I start bossing people around, right? Getting everybody else working this. Same room, different gifts, but every one of them is needed and vital. And you have those gifts. You've got one of those gifts. And you need to be part of the local church. And if this is not your local church, this is not your church home, your church family, go find one. Do not be an orphaned Christian. There are 30 verses in the New Testament that you cannot fulfill if you're not part of the local church. And listen, it doesn't have to be this one. Go find one. Go find a leadership you can get behind, a, a vision you can get behind to fulfill God's purposes in this kingdom. Your design, how God made you, will reveal your destiny. You're uniquely wired. I love what David says. This is my wife's favorite verse 
in Psalm 139. Here's what King David says. He says, for you, God, you created my inmost being. You knit me, man, you made me with certain passions and certain abilities. I, I, I got things inside of me that are not mine. I got a personality, I got a drive that's not mine, it's yours, God. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I, I praise you because I am accidentally made. No, I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. Your words are wonderful, and I know that full well. Many of you, let's just be honest. Just go ahead and get to it. Many of you are drifting. You're not plugged in. You're not using your giftedness. You're not helping encouraging other people with it. And the fulfillment comes and understanding how God made you and then using that giftedness and how you're supposed to operate, how you were created to operate. And then David takes the next step. He says, all the days, look at this, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. It's awesome. It's awesome knowing that God has a plan for your life, for my life. But let's just be honest. Things haven't always gone to plan, to God's plan in my life and your life. Why? Because we've added a few chapters he didn't write. We added a few things. We, we took some detours that, that he didn't write. We, we said, you know what, God, I, I might be gifted in that, but I don't care, or I, I, that's not for me. I couldn't do that, and, which is true. You can't do it, but God can do it through you. But you, we, just, we just dismiss God, and we, we rebel out of guilt and shame, and we, we, write our own, we write our own chapters. But listen, the last chapter, guess what? Still fits. The last chapter still fits. Some of you need to hear this today. God has a book. Is what David's saying, and the book is entitled Your Life. It's got your name on it. God's, God's got it written, but you wrote a few chapters that he didn't write. But I promise you this, there's hope for you. Walk in his obedience and, and watch him work in your life in ways that will blow your mind because I promise you, he'll make the last chapter fit. He created you to listen to me so you can do something about it. You can do something about it right now and you can say, you know what? I was made for this. I was made for this, man. That's my dream. I love hearing RCC letters like Sherry. People come up to me and say, you know, I came to RCC and I found Jesus. And through the community here and life groups, I got some of my issues. And I'm working through stuff through the power of God in a community with other believers. And I'm, I, I've been test driving, Nathan, some ministries. And I love it when they tell me they found their fit. So I want to encourage you to test drive some ministries. Once again, on the screen right now behind me. You guys online, you can see it too. Go to that, go ahead and QR code there. Go to riverchristian.church slash serve and just test drive some ministries. Just test drive some ministries. I, I'm not doing what I do because, because I just stand on the sidelines. I, 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 I test drove some things. And God just made a path. Just be faithful. Watch what God does. Here's my dream. My dream is this. We pass around a mic. We have an open mic time. And you hear people talk about their experiences. Just visualize with me for a moment. A guy named John grabs the mic and he says, Hi, my name's John. Pastor Nathan's not the only pastor here. I'm a minister of Jesus Christ. And I have the gift of compassion. And so I serve in our outreach missions team. And I found my niche in all those options in that team with the Father's Heart Ministry. Every, every month I go and I, I leave from RCC's campus and I take food to someone in need in our community. I'm so thankful I get to be a part of that. I'm called. I was made for this. Someone says, my name's Lynn, and, and I, I've got a gift of administration. I help run the RCC's check-in process and make that run even smoother for young families so they know that their kids will be safe as they hear about Jesus Christ while those parents and grandparents worship. Someone else says, hey, my name's Mike, and, and I, I, I work out in the production team, and you know, the, all those wires make sense to me. And Nathan thinks he's making this happen, but actually, if it wasn't for me, he'd go nowhere. You wouldn't hear him at all. I'm helping getting the word out. I was called. I was called. I was made for this. Someone else says, you know, my name is uh, uh, Courtney, and, and, and I'm a minister of Jesus Christ, and I have the gift of evangelism. And me and my, my high school friends, we got a small group, and we're bringing more people in, and we're saving them for, the, for Jesus Christ. Man, I was, I was made for this. A guy named Tom says, you know what, I have a gift of administration and leadership too, and I'm taking 20-year-olds, and I'm teaching some things that they need to know about as they walk in Jesus as a young adult. But lastly, a our, our guy named Matt says, you know, uh, my name's Matt, and I got the spiritual gift of goofiness, all right? That's my spiritual gift, and I work with junior hires. And I want them to know how much Jesus loves them and how much they have a purpose if they follow Jesus Christ. I mean, I was made for this. 
That's my dream, church, is hearing those stories. I want to close with something that may touch you personally. I think, I think this is why the gifts, the gifts kind of help us to figure out who we are. Like, the question is, who am I? And people are so confused by that question. They're so confused by their identity, aren't they, right now? Who am I? And they're so confused, and they go to, they go to the world, and, and they're trying to figure out their pronouns. I mean, it's just really confusing because the world's not going to give them the answer they're looking for about their identity. Where, where can they find their identity? God. God. God is the only one who has the answer to the question, who am I? God is the only one. You're never going to know who you are unless you go to the one who designed you and made you in the first place. And so as we go in spiritual gifts here, I want to wrap up out of that same section of Scripture, Romans 12. When Paul wrote these words, he says, Do not think of yourself more what? More highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with what? Sober judgment. In accordance with the measure of what? Faith God has given you. I want to break down those three words real quick. Number one is highly. Highly does not mean snooty. Highly means wrong-minded. Like you're not thinking with the in, you're thinking an improper way, improper view of yourself. And many of us are thinking that way about ourselves, just improper. So what you need to do is have a right mind, which is where we get the word sober. Sober means being right mind. In fact, it's the same word when Jesus cast demons out of a man. It says that he came to his right mind. Many of us need deliverance right now from a wrong view. And you, you have disqualified yourself, if you're honest, and I get it. You've disqualified yourself from what God has called you to do, and you need to get in your right mind. Well, how do I do that? By faith. All of us have different gifts, but we're all going to come and step with God through the one same vehicle, and that is faith. Living out our giftedness is conditional upon our faith. What does faith mean? Faith is allowing the one who created you to give you the right view. That's what faith does. So if I take uh, Romans 12 and I give you the PNT, which is Pastor Nathan translation, <laughs> here's how I'd write it. I'd say this. I'd say, do not have the wrong view of yourself, but rather be set free and put in your right mind by allowing the one who created you to show you who you are and what you were created to do. Will you stand with me? I want to give you an opportunity now to receive that first gift if you haven't. If you've never been saved by Jesus Christ, I want to give you the opportunity to do that. There's people up here who love to pray with you. You can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and get that eternal life, be saved. Some of us just need prayers right now. We're like, God, I need your help figuring out what is my giftedness, or I'm scared. I, I know what it is, but I've been pushing it off for so long. Why don't you come up here? We'd love to pray. Maybe, maybe you have a, a praise God. God has used you, or maybe you've seen him use somebody else, and you want to praise God for it. You can come up here. We'll pray for that. Well, let me pray over you before we worship the great God that we have. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I come before you because every person hearing my voice is fearfully and wonderfully made. And Lord, there have been a lot of struggles, a lot of, a lot of distractions because of worries, because of stress and busyness, because of guilt, because of shame. Lord, we just don't feel like we can be used by you. And Lord, that's a lie. That's a lie from hell. And may we call it out. And may we go, God, you can use even me. And Lord, when you do that, you're going to get all the glory because they know it didn't come from me, it came from you. And Lord, I pray right now for every one of us to step into the flow of how you made us, how you created us. Lord, I pray for all distractions to be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, may we step out to the light right now. May we take one bold step because of faith right now and be used by you and step into a life of purpose that we were created to live. Thank you, God, for using us. And may nothing stop, stop us from giving you all praise and all glory with our lives. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, the whole church said, Amen. Hey, can we give God the praise, church? Just give him great. He is the great one. Come up here right now. We pray for you. Let's give him glory together.
morning church he is worthy of it hey we want to thank you so much for being here as you leave if you're not a part of a life group as pastor nathan said we want you in service in prayer or in service in serving and in a life group if you're not part of a life group we have a life group table out there in the atrium go and check out the different groups that are available also we have a 24-hour day of prayer coming up february 3rd it's going to be amazing if you want more information about that or you want to serve in that we have a table out in the atrium and go get signed up for that, more information. And then also, church, we, uh, we hope that today is a blessing for you. We hope that you wanna get plugged in. If you wanna learn more about serving, go to riverchristian.church slash serve, and you can see all the different areas to serve. Scan that QR code right there, and let us know where you wanna serve, and we will reach out to you uh, so fast because we wanna get you plugged in, okay? Hey, we love you. We hope that you have a blessed day. Go and be a blessing to others, and we'll see you next week.